Hello, I am Sarah McDermott, the founder of Prindy, and with me today is Chu Yang, who is the writer-director behind the short live-action film, She Runs, which we are honored to have as part of our official selection for Prindy 2020. So Chu, thank you so much for being with us here right now. Well, thank you very much for selecting, especially during this really weird time. <laughs> It's a very unique time, but I think I think people, you know, need their yeah. film more than ever because it, it is definitely strange yeah. times. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so to give everyone just a quick synopsis of this film and what it's about. So at the heart of She Runs, we have a young, like junior high age protagonist um, who is a member of a competitive aerobics dance team at her school. And almost from your very first shot, we see that this is something she just, she absolutely hates. She, it, other people mentioned that it's an honor for her to be included on this team. Um, but very quickly we see that she just, she wants no part of it. And I think this is a film yep. that can really resonate with anybody who has ever felt pressure to perform, um, particularly from like teachers, coaches, parents. I really identified with it because I, I used to be in athletics in high school and college and I, I definitely experienced the pressure that she seems to experience. So my very first question to you is just about your inspiration for this piece and whether or not it grew out of any experience you had um, dealing with this kind of pressure. No, it's, uh, well, it was, it was because I was uh, part of a school marching band when I was in primary school like a long time ago and uh, um, I mean, it, w it, w it was, um, I, I, I started the, uh, participating in the school marching band without knowing I was playing trumpet, but I didn't know anything about it. So, and I was young enough that, you know, at that age, it's basically your parents would agree for you for things that school asked for. Mm -hmm. And I mean, back then in China, being uh, in anything in the school team is, is sort of a really honor. So, so I was participating and I was uh, uh, training trumpet and uh, at a certain stage, like not two or three years later, I, I, was, I was very good at it. I was part of the team, but then you start as, as, as a teenager, you start, oh, I don't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I fell in love with other stuff and I just don't want to do it anymore. And then I was like, I want to quit. But I, I didn't really know, I mean, at the time, nobody knew that it was so hard. Um, to try to quit a school team because the school like oh we we spend so much resources and everything to train you you can't betray us we need you you can't you're not you 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 belong to the school now <laughs> so it was it was it was a huge uh, I mean very difficult period of time in my life that I, I still remembered I mean things happen but the, the things happened in real life was much uh, much more harsh than what I put in the film actually. Mm -hmm. I mean those things probably wouldn't really happen right now, but back then you would have but but yeah it was it was it was from my real um, um, things that I've expressed yeah wow. it, it is it's it's wild like what I feel got pulled out in this film and what you're talking about that happens in real life it's like somebody has um you know, a talent and they may or may not have an affinity for that talent, but just because it's there, other people sort of come in and take over and are like, this is what you're doing. Yeah. Now. Yeah. 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 And I, I mean, I mean, I mean, also at the time when I was doing it, I, I, I don't really, I, I didn't think I was really good at, I mean, you, you were young and you don't know about anything about if you're good at anything, you're just like, oh, I can play it. And, and one day it's like, okay, I just don't want to do it anymore. But the thing is, the thing is, I, I just felt, Afterwards, when I think about this kind of thing, it, it, it felt like it, once you put it into into our society with individualism, with the and uh, and with 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 the whole group, and you, you just felt like it's it's a very interesting sort of uh, situation. So yeah, right. Um, one thing I found really interesting with this film, so like a lot of times when you have film about pressure or maybe to some degree bullying, you know, making someone do something, a lot of times it's coming from peers and from the other children. Um, but in this film, it's the other kids are, they really don't factor into it at all. All the pressure is coming from these adults. Um, but the adults aren't necessarily bad people. So I kind of wanted to ask, ask you about that as well. When you put this together, if you saw them as villains or if you saw them more as just, you know, they're doing what they think is, is right. They have their own pressures. Well, I mean, to me, at least for the, for the, for the coach or for the parents, they are doing uh, from because they have their own reasons and they think it's the, it's, it's, uh, I mean, for, for father, I mean, the father thinks it's the, it's, it's better um, uh, option for her. 
because she she isn't doing well with her grades and she needs that extra point to graduate. It's it's for your own good, and uh, and and with the coach, you know, obviously like oh, we train you. If you have that, it's, it's it will be your honor. But I think I think I don't I don't want to portray anyone as as a simple villain in in, in the film because they all have their own reasons. They all have their own sort of. Uh, uh, um, difficulties in their life because you know they're also uh, above above the coach there are schools so that would be you know does a school would put pressure on the on the coach like you have to win awards you have to do better uh, you know if 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 she quits and they can't they cannot uh, participate or compete uh, with 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 the game or, or or if they lose the game then you know the, the coach is going to be in problem so they are all sort of uh, uh, um, um, there, there are string attached with everybody in a way, but it's just for me in this story. I, I sort of focused on 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 the on the main character, the girl. But I think with the father, with the coach, they all have their own. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I really it really jumped out at me. You had that one scene with the father too, where it's mentioned that he was publicly criticized, and you really realized like, oh, he's under all this pressure as well. Like it's not just her. It's yeah, it's all of them. Yeah. Um, in this film, I thought you did such a spectacular job, more so than, you know, so many films, of the camera really mimicking her internal state and, you know, putting us right there sort of into what she's feeling with, um, with every shot. And it, it was also very interesting to me that, like, your form and technique with the camera was, was so impeccable and this juxtaposition of her form and technique on the team, which is really like lackluster and she doesn't want to be doing it. And I was curious to know, um, you know, just how much of that was all planned out prior to getting to set like your shots and how you were going to approach this and how much of it just sort of came, you know, while you guys were in the process of filming. Well, I, I would say probably, I probably a hundred percent were all planned. I think. I mean, uh, and the, it, it's just the way how I work with my my uh, cinematographer. And uh, I mean, she's 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 uh, she's really talented uh, uh, DOP from Germany. And I, this is the second time I work with her. And uh, and we all have quite similar um, sort of um, uh, um, uh, methodology uh, in terms of making in uh, the film and in pre-production we like to, we don't use a lot of lights we don't use a lot of equipment what we I and mean, we also don't have money to do those what we you, what we do is we spend a lot of time in pre-production to look for locations look for places that we think that's already good enough to 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 be put in the film and then what we would do i don't i don't i don't do storyboard uh, as the traditional way i don't write a script then imagine how they're gonna happen then draw them i don't do that what i what i do is i would just go to places locations and see okay what if i put this thing in this location how would i shoot it how my dop want to shoot it and then what would you spend all of time on locations and taking photos and uh, try to imagine oh if, if it happens in this location how would that happen then what we do is we would you know, select the location we love the most and with all the shots that we've taken and then, okay, how do we compose this scene? How, you know, it's one shot or how do we, how do we, how do we, you know, uh, how do we plan this thing? Then, yeah, so basically all the shots are planned, pre-planned in pre-production. Uh, pre mm -hmm. And during the production, to me, my, my own belief is, uh, I want to save as, as much time uh, um, as I can for me and my actors. I don't want to do any technical things on set, uh, including try to come up with new shots. But of course, sometimes, you know, when the light strikes uh, and you, you come up with something, ah, maybe this could be better than what we've planned. So sometimes I, I, I do have that and, uh, and I try to, so sometimes I would try to shoot both both versions, but most of the time, at least what we what we see in She Runs, I think those were all hundred, I mean, maybe that's one shot we, we uh, once we put actor in, we felt, okay, the, the, the focal lens with the lens is, is, is uh, wouldn't work, it should be wider or something like that. We, we've done one or two shots with that, but mostly everything's pre-planned mm -hmm. um, so that I could give uh, most of the time and uh, give more freedom to the actor. So let them to do things, let them to come up with different stuff. So yeah. Wonderful. 
Um, and speaking of your actors, so reading up on you a little bit online, I did read that a lot of times you choose to work with, with you know, actors that aren't formally trained, so like unprofessional actors. Um, so what to you has kind of been, you know, most beneficial to kind of bringing people in who, instead of having this formal training, are just sort of coming at this fresh? Well, it, uh, to me, I think it depends. I mean, I, I was I, I studied filmmaking in Australia. So I when I was uh, um, studying in Australia, making film in Australia, I worked with professional actors as well. And I'm a big fan of theaters. So, but but I think I think it really depends on the project. With the, with the three short films that I made in China, I shot all of them in my hometown in Changzhou, and all of them have to speak my local dialect. And uh, and it's a small city there's no film industry and i don't know anybody any actors from my city so it was natural and also we don't have any money so it was natural for me to to try to work with i think with the first shots on the song we i, I tried something with the all non-professional that I, I felt like okay this is something really i can try to do and with 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 a gentle night um then i, I found someone who's sort of um, a, my local opera singer so she's not an actor, but she sings on stage. So she's uh, she's not really afraid of people watching her. And then with this one, uh, again, uh, it was all um, uh, audition like uh, real people, and I found her from my own like my old uh, high school. Actually. <laughs> so 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 I, I felt like there are certain. So to me, I I just felt like they you know with, with this projects. Uh, uh, with 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 unprofessional, untrained performer, they they, you know, I th I think they suit the project, but it doesn't mean that all my films going to be unprofessional, uh, like with no professional actors. I think it really depends on the project and also the character. It's just how much the the the, the character, you know, how much weight the character can uh, need to carry, how much weight the the performer needs to carry, and also with a short film, I think. It's it's easier to to work with um, untrained uh, performer in that way because you you're only creating twenty minutes worth of performance. Unlike, unlike you have to like feature film, you have to create like two hours worth of yeah. performance, which will be much harder to to with an untrained performer. I, I mean, sometimes of course, some there are certain projects that works. I think, but to me, I think it just really depends. Yeah. Nice. Well, I mean, I definitely, in this film, I mean, the performances are all so authentic and I think it just, it, it works really, really well, um, the cast that you well, have. Well, I, I mean, I mean, it was, it was, to me, it was all, all, I was just lucky, to be honest, like with, with this one and with the last one, um, all I did is, I, I, I mean, I, I, I did, I made the casting um, decision, but I, I didn't really direct her in a way. I, I mean, for a lot of things, I told her, I was like, oh, you, you, you know the script? You know what she's thinking you show me you know show me how you would do it and i don't i, I wouldn't say anything then i'll just sit in front of the cam uh, behind the camera in front of the monitor and see how she perform in that space how she would imagine how she would actually do it as her in that space and that would be the first time uh, i see that scene and uh, and um, yeah, it was all her. It was it was probably five percent my job. It was ninety five percent her work. Nice, wonderful. Now um, to go back to the story for just for just a minute, what uh, what kind of pulled you to choose this particular type of of team? So like a you know a dance team versus versus you know like music or marching band or some other types of athletics. Well, I I that's a good question. I think I, was, I mean, I, I didn't really put a lot of thoughts in it. I, I suppose I want something more energetic in mm -hmm. a way, uh, um, rather than like a musical team or like playing instruments or something. I, I want something more energetic in a way. It, it, it creates, um, you know, it's it's better for for the for the sort of uh, for the image in a way, and also does music in there. So. Uh, I mean, I didn't. I, I, to be honest, I didn't really put in a lot of thoughts like why I didn't do like a sports team. So, but yeah, I, I guess it just, it just, it just. I just thought, you know, um, Arabic dancing would be good. <laughs> Well, I think I think sometimes like subconsciously it's like even you know like because I think what you just said about the energy level because we definitely get that her energy well, level yeah. is so low <laughs> yeah. to be doing this like joyful dance um, is is like a really yeah. great contrast so so I think it comes <laughs> subconsciously sometimes even when it's not when it's not planned out. 
Um, so I read online yeah. somewhere that the, so the original title for this um, in the original language, when it's translated, actually means Southern Girl. Mm. So I was very curious to know. Yeah, yeah, good. Oh. Yes, in the process of translating it, sort of what led to this, this different title of She Runs. Well, I, I mean, to be honest, I, I mean, we came up with the English title first. Oh, okay. <laughs> then, because because the, the way how I my 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 creative process is, I I wrote all my script in English because that's because I was trained in Australia, so I I was trained to write script in English. So I don't know how to write script in Chinese actually, oh. and uh, and uh, and that's that's like a, a process that I've been. Uh, uh, using until now, like with my feature film, I, I'm developing English as well. So I, I came, you know, I have the English title first, um, but but it was a struggle to pick this this title, which we came up with a lot of options, but we just felt in the end it felt like this is very you know you know uh, simplistic, and also it, it also it has the the lightness in it as well, you know, because the film is so 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 heavy, but we felt you know this is. She runs this title that suits it. With the Chinese title, we uh, with the Chinese title, we just felt like you know it's um, it's something more uh, figurative, mm -hmm. uh, figurative, figurative. So it's 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 it means uh, the girl from South mm -hmm. and and the city that I'm from and also the city where the film film story and filming taking place is is my hometown. It's from South. So I just I just felt like okay, a girl from South. <laughs> so that's yeah. So, well, I mean, it's it's uh, yeah. Well, I I I mean, the main reason is just I didn't really come up with anything else. <laughs> it's it's the best thing I felt I could come up with. Oh my goodness, it's so interesting to me that you write it in English first. Is that like a big challenge to kind of then take that and you know move that when you're shooting in China, like change things over or? Oh, I I mean, no, I I I I would develop the. The, the the script in English uh, until the point I felt like it's it's the you know the structure and all the story is basically developed then I would translate it into Chinese mm -hmm. so then I would start when I need to start the casting process I would translate it mm -hmm. um, because you know all all my uh, collaborator uh, uh, creative collaborator they are uh, half of them are foreigners mm -hmm. and uh, the the producer that I, the Chinese producer I work with they all speak English so I felt like well I just maintain this this writing uh, uh, habit uh, to write in English, uh, develop in English because it's I, I mainly focus on the the, the structure and the story, mm -hmm. and then then when I need to do uh, to to do the casting, I would translate into Chinese, um, and mostly because of the dialogue. So I have to work with the actor with the dialogue, and they're speaking Chinese. So that's the part that I need to work with them. Mm -hmm. So then from that from that draft, I would keep developing. Uh, in Chinese, but mainly in dialogue. Then, if I rewrite a draft in Chinese, I would translate it back into English, then hand it to all the all the foreign uh, head of department. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> amazing. I think feel like for so many people, it would be hard enough just to be dealing with the one language. <laughs> um, well, it's it, yeah. I don't know if it's a, for the better or worse. <laughs> I think it must be for better because the film turned out turned out so well. Um, so you have, I mean, to kind of go off on this on this tangent, you have had like a very international career. So you're born and raised in China, um, studied in Australia. A lot of your um, the people that you work with on your films are from all different countries, and you've done some work in France as well. So for this particular story, because um, I, I do think, of course, you know, being based in China, that influences a lot of your work. I was curious to get your thoughts on whether you thought this same story could be set in any other country um, or like say America, for example, where there's so much more of a focus on, you know, individual finding their bliss and still carry the same kind of meaning and power. Um, or if to you, you felt like this was a story that really, this is, this is really a story that had to be in China. Mm. In, in its core, I think, I, I hope it's, it's, a, it's a sort of a, a, a Global, uh, in a way that everybody would understand what the in its core what the story is trying to tell. And uh, I mean, of course, with the specifications, it's 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 sort of set in China. But I think um, the the similar story with the same core it could happen in anywhere in the in the in the um, in the in the world. Probably not in Switzerland. It's a, such a peaceful, wonderful country. So. <laughs> but maybe, maybe in a in a in a in a different setting, in a different you know, not necessarily in the school or not necessarily in this setting, 
but in different setting, I think, you know, there's always, you know, there are always people being suppressed by something else. So, so I, I believe it could, you know, in its core, it could happen in anywhere, but probably in a different settings. Um, so now to talk for just a minute about kind of what's coming up next for you. So I did read somewhere that you're working on a project that's maybe a VR project. So I was very curious about that, how you are thinking of using that technology um, in your storytelling. Well, actually, it was it was already made. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I, I've, I've already, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I've already made a VR. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was it was before. It was in the same year uh, as um, it was in the same year I made She Runs, but I'm, I, I'm it was 2008. So I made the VR in the mid 2018. Then I made She Runs uh, end of 2018, early 2019. Mm -hmm. So. So you, I mean, I, 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 I like the whole experience. I never made a VR project before. I, I really like the process, and uh, and uh, it was it was it was sort of uh, you know semi commissioned work. But I was lucky enough they they said you can do whatever you want. <laughs> so 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 to, to me to me I've never done it. So I, I didn't want to create another sort of. Uh, uh, I've done a lot of fiction, uh, social realism work. So I, I just said I don't want to do another fiction film. So mm -hmm. I actually worked with uh, a performance artist. So I made it into more or less like a high hyper uh, performing art with installation lighting installation and all the stuff so so i worked with a performance artist a french performance artist called Olivier de Sagenza, which uh, uh, he's one of my favorite and uh, i just felt it's it's a good chance for me to work with someone that i like and uh, and I, I really felt like the whole medium I don't, I don't, I don't believe VR is an extension of a traditional cinema. It's unlike a 3D. It's it, to me, 3D is like an extension of of um, of, of traditional cinema. But, but VR, it's a entirely new medium. Um, no matter how much you feel, we feel like it's similar to 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 cinema because also it's image and sound. But I, I felt like it's more focused on experience. It's a very unique experience, and. Uh, but it's, I feel like it's a very undefined medium. Um, um, I enjoyed creating something mm -hmm. with that medium. And um, in the future, if there's opportunity, I would like to do it again. But um, hopefully, the, but the, the problem is the, the, the lacking in the um, um, technicality. Uh, department. I think. I think when you when you see VR, there are a lot of wonderful VR projects are made with animations, mm -hmm. because it doesn't it, like with live action. It just the, the lacking of the technicality is is a is a problem that's slowing it down. So I mean that's my view. <laughs> so what do you what do you think is uh, is next for you, or what are you planning for your next project? I, I, I'm I'm developing a, a feature project at the moment, so hopefully it's going to be my next project. But I'm I'm just writing and developing it, and hopefully I can make it soon. <laughs> we can't wait to see it when you do have it ready, for sure. Um, yes. So we we got to wrap up in just a minute. So before we do, um, just going back to she runs. What what do you think is the main takeaway that you're just hoping audiences will kind of take from this film? Mm. Well, I'm I, I'm I'm not sure actually. I mean, it's it's when, when I make a when, every time when I make a film that I don't really try to insert any any message or I, I try not to insert things to obviously say okay this is what I want you to think. But obviously I, I'm I'm a person that's always an opinion behind everything I do. Um, so I, I think what I, I want to do is to show people uh, what is happening or what might have um, happened before uh, to show does a situation like this, does a, does a story like this happening and what do you think about it? I think this is what I really hope trying to provoke pe people to think. Uh, what do you think about this? Like there's a, there's a girl want to quit and uh, she was suppressed um, to do something she doesn't like to do. And uh, do, you, do, do, you, do you know anybody like this in your life? Do, do you ever happen to do that with your family, with, with, with your children, or you know, with anyone? I think, I think it's something that I, I'm trying to provoke people to think. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about this? So 
but but you know regarding message not necessary <laughs> <laughs> not not really any message. Yeah. I definitely think, I mean, along with what you're saying, I think anybody who has experienced any kind of pressure really is going to be able to relate to this because I think that is a very relatable universal feeling. So to all of you watching, um, don't miss She Runs. <laughs> you are going to see, I think, something of your own experience, you know, in this in this film. Um, so again, it is an official selection of Prindy 2020, which is happening virtually this year in these strange times um, from September 10th to 13th. And again, this is really just such a remarkable film. So thank you so much, uh, Chu, for just for being here, talking about it a little bit more in depth and for sharing it with our community. We can't wait to share it with them. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.